I do not want to hear from all of you out there that are telling me that Lamar Jackson, well, they don't get him weapons. How many first-round wide receivers do you need to draft? Well, they're not drafting the right one. Well, you're not developing them. Well, how do you develop them? Well, your quarterback has a long way to go in developing wide receivers. So I don't want to hear that anymore. And you Baltimore fans, I'm tired of it. They drafted first round of talent. They've drafted tight ends in the first round. They've drafted three different wide receivers since 2018 in the first round. I mean, Aaron Rodgers went, what, 16, 17 years with the Green Bay Packers? They never drafted a guy in the first round, whether it was a tight end or or a wide receiver for him. So don't tell me about it. I mean, it's one of those things. Don't tell me about the pain. Show me the baby. Produce in the playoffs. Those are some powerful words from Mark Schlereth on Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. And even though I know the majority of you did not like what he had to say, you can still leave a like on the video. Go ahead and click that thumbs up button, leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel, and turn them notifications on so you do not miss not a single thing. Now, he said that he's tired of hearing Baltimore Ravens fans, Lamar Jackson stands, complain and say the Baltimore Ravens have not done enough for their two-time MVP quarterback, Lamar Jackson. And let's break down everything that he had to say. But the first, one of the things I want to touch on is context, because on here we are big on context. I do not like just taking one quote from an article or one clip from a video and going off of that. I like seeing the whole thing. But in this case, this is different. Because Mark Schlereth, he was the one that put this video out. He was the one that dropped this clip from his podcast. So he knew exactly what he was doing with it. But that's okay. I don't mind because it's on him. Now, uh, he talked about how people have said that the Baltimore Ravens, they don't get Lamar Jackson enough weapons. And how many first round wide receivers do you need? He also talked about how Lamar Jackson has a long way to go when it comes to the development of his wide receivers receivers now when you think about the first round draft picks at wide receivers that the baltimore ravens have had thus far under lamar jackson uh, it's been hollywood brown that was a hit they hit on that draft pick and hollywood brown was somebody that cons immediately made an impact for the baltimore ravens offense and he will consistently get around or over a thousand yards consistently get around or over 100 catches he was heavily involved in baltimore ravens offense it obviously didn't end uh on the positive note because he didn't like the way the offense was headed he didn't like the direction of it he requested to be traded Eric DeCosta always says if somebody doesn't want to be here we're not going to hold them hostage they let him be traded so that was him so but baltimore ravens they hit on him and he was developing well rashad bateman Drafted in the first round in 2021. With well, Rashad Bateman, it's been tricky because we've seen some flashes. We've seen the potential. But for several reasons, they just haven't been able to consistently develop Rashad Bateman. Now, some of that, in my opinion, is on Rashad Bateman. Some of it is also on Lamar Jackson. And I'm going to tell you why. With Rashad Bateman, remember his rookie year. Rookie year 2021. And that was a nice little squad that the Baltimore Ravens had. Um, but literally everybody got hurt. But anyway, Rashad Bateman, his rookie year. Came on the scene, offseason. He got hurt. All season he got hurt, and that ended up trickling into the regular season, so he missed some games in the regular season, so he wasn't out there. But then when he got healthy enough, he started playing, and him and Lamar Jackson, instant connection like that. But guess what happened after that? Lamar Jackson, he ended up getting hurt. And he was like, oh, man, this, is, this sucks. This is terrible. So then the, the following season, so that again, part of that was on Rashad because he missed time because he was hurt. Then the end part was on Lamar because he missed time because he was hurt. But then the following year, uh, with Rashad Bateman, he had ended up getting hurt. Uh, I think he was hurt really all season, and then he had that, that foot injury. He had to get surgery. That ended his year, so that took him out for the rest of the regular season. Um, so that messed him up too. Uh, and then the following year, which was last season, 2023, uh, Rashad Bateman, he was dealing with an injury uh, in the offseason. He did play the majority of the regular season, but him and Lamar Jackson, they just could not get it down packed. Rashad Bateman has taken full responsibility for it. He said, hey, that's on me. I done missed a lot of time in the offseason and stuff, but this offseason is going to be different. I'm going to be locked in with Lamar. Lamar Jackson, trust me. And he said, we're going to get it right. So we'll see what happens this season. We'll see what happens starting in training camp and then come regular season. We'll see how that works itself out. So Rashad Bateman, as a first-round draft pick for the Baltimore Ravens, it hasn't worked out thus far, but it's still to be determined since he's obviously still with the team. Now, their last and most recent first-round draft pick, Zay Flat Flowers. They nailed that one out of the park too. Zay Flowers was amazing for the Baltimore Ravens last year. Immediate impact 
feature player for the Baltimore Ravens. Him and Lamar Jackson have excellent chemistry, and he made an impact, and they missed on a lot of plays, too. But Zay Flowers is nice, and he definitely got all the potential in the world to be a number one wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. So when it comes to the development of first-round draft picks at wide receiver, I would have to disagree with Mark Schlereth on that one. Now, you don't, let's take it a, another notch above just first-round draft picks at wide receiver for the Ravens. Let's just talk about all the receivers as a whole for the Baltimore Ravens that they've had under Lamar Jackson specifically. Then we're going to go a little further than that. Because when you think about it, obviously Hollywood, Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, those are the first round picks. But then there's some other receivers too. They had Miles Boykin that they drafted. They drafted Tylen Wallace, James Prochet, Devin Duvernay. Uh, so they've had some other guys that they've drafted too. But along with that, in my opinion, the best way to develop a quarterback, the best way to really get the most out of your quarterback is to not only pair him with rookies and young wide receivers, but to also pair him with guys in their prime, guys who are like that, guys who are just straight up dogs, proven players at the wide receiver position. And that's something that the Baltimore Ravens have not done a good job at, in my opinion. Because under Lamar Jackson, some of the veteran proven wide receivers that the Baltimore Ravens have had uh, are Willie Sneed. And it, Willie Sneed was not bad, but you just want somebody like that for your quarterback. They've got a Dez Bryant who hadn't played in like four years. They got Sammy Watkins who got all the talent in the world, but just was always hurt. Uh, they brought Deshaun Jackson uh, out of retirement. They had guys like John Brown and Michael Crabtree, even though those are more Flacco guys, but... You, you, you see the theme there. And, and even with Odell Beckham Jr. With Odell Beckham Jr., yeah, it was great to get Odell Beckham Jr. He had brought a great vibe to the Baltimore Ravens. And he was solid for the Baltimore Ravens. But it was still not the Odell Beckham Jr. of old. Not the one that we once knew. So when the Baltimore Ravens, when it comes to pairing Lamar Jackson, pairing his young wide receivers with quality veteran wide receivers who are proven, who are like that right here, right now, they just haven't done a good job of that. And in my opinion, I think after 2019, and I've said this a lot of times before, that's when they should have done that. That's when they should have really attacked the wide receiver position like that. Because 2018, that was Flacco's year, and then it transitioned to Lamar. So that was Lamar's rookie year. All right, cool. You get a pass for that. 2019, you get a pass for that too. Because there was a lot of unknowns with Lamar Jackson. But he showed you a hey, unanimous MVP, his first full season starting. Okay, oh, this, this guy can play some football. He belongs. 2020, that's where you should have been going crazy with it. That's when you should have really invested into Lamar Jackson like that. So in my opinion, that is where the Baltimore Ravens, they failed Lamar Jackson. So they could certainly have done a much, much, much better job of providing for him in that case. Now, in my opinion, last year, 2023, that was probably the best the, the, the best that the, uh, the Ravens have provided for Lamar Jackson throughout the tenor of his career. Um, because... Not only did they bring in young talent, but they had some veterans, too. And then they still had the guys that they had already had on the squad. Uh, and they really like and then they changed the offense, too. That's an even bigger thing, because we talk about the talent. We talk about the roster. We talk about the personnel. But the scheme is a whole nother topic. And with the scheme, as we know, even before Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens have primarily been a run first organization. They run first organization. Let's play some great defense. And that has been their thing since Lamar Jackson, since Joe Flacco, and even way before that as well. That has been who they are. The only time they were past first team was that one year under Mark Tressman when he was the offensive coordinator. But besides that, they've been a primarily run first team. So when you are a run first team, your focus is running the ball, running the ball, and getting some chunk plays uh, through the passing game. But since your focus is so much on running the ball, not to say that that is an excuse for the lack of the development uh, of your wide receivers overall, but that is a big part of it. That's a big reason because you're so focused on running. And I know a lot of Ravens fans have wanted to change that. And with Todd Munkin, in my opinion, Todd Munkin has been a breath of fresh air because with their offense, minus the AFC Championship game, but with their offense, they've done a good, a good job of doing a lot of both in the run game, doing a lot in the passing game, and just really mixing it up and allowing the two to really complement each other. So overall, last year was a great step in the right direction to really get the most out of Lamar Jackson, get the most out of the running backs, get the most out of the wide receivers. We still got to work on getting the most out of the tight ends at the same time because we got two great ones. 
But we got to work on getting the most out of them while they're on the field together. But another topic for another day. So Todd Monken was a breath of fresh air. But the Baltimore Ravens, over their years, they really haven't had that fresh air like that consistently. So with Mark Schlereth and everything that he had to say about Lamar Jackson and the offense and the development and the wide receivers and that the Baltimore Ravens haven't provided enough, most of it I, I disagree with. I, I, I respectfully disagree with. Now, something else that he had to say. He said, don't tell me about the pain. Show me the baby. Now, I have never heard that saying a day in my life. This was the first time that I had ever heard it. But basically, he was saying that producing the playoffs, producing the playoffs, and that I do agree with. The Baltimore Ravens, they need to produce in the playoffs. Now, Lamar Jackson, we've seen him have some productive playoff performances. We've seen him put up a whole lot of yards, but with that, that is where it gets even trickier. Now, Lamar Jackson, he has made a lot of plays in the playoffs. He's missed uh, a good amount of plays in the playoffs as well. But it seems that it's, it's just the weirdest thing, and I think this actually goes far beyond just Lamar Jackson. He's a part of it, but it goes far beyond him and over his head that the Baltimore Ravens, when it comes to the playoffs, they just seem to forget who they are. They completely forget their identity. They forgot what got them there, and that has been an issue for the longest. But in my opinion, that's not a Lamar Jackson thing. That's more on the people up top. 